Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Madam Speaker, the CEO of companies, their salaries are especially high. However, we have to recognize the fact that their bonuses and other compensations are more extraordinary. We see a problem in this case. Is it right for the CEOs or the executives, despite the fact that on average they have 38 times the salary of an average worker, to have more compensation given to them with bonuses, so that after the bonuses are added up, the amount that they earn by the company is on average 300 to 500 times the average worker is paying at the investment. We see that they, that's a problem we have in the status quo. As an over, we see that as a problem. And that's why uh, we think of there's a problem with the process of paying bonuses itself and the results of the bonuses itself. And therefore, we propose the motion. This house condemns the payment of bonuses to executives to supplement their salaries. Before moving on to our team's or our, our arguments, I have to first move on and clarify today's motion uh, and certificates. By condemn, we mean to criticize and also disapprove of, because in the status quo, we say, by saying condemn, we mean in the status quo, the payment of bonuses to executives to supplement their salaries have more harm than good. By bonuses, we mean additional monetary payment compensation to these executives, which does not include uh, other compensation forms uh, uh, like uh, stock, option, stock options. We're going to include only the bonuses as it says in the motion and the term itself as bonuses as monetary payment to these people, short term monetary payment to these executives. And by executives, you mean uh, chief executive officer or chief financial officer, uh, these people who are in the top spots of the company and managing the company, and, some, and many times where these people are also members of the board of directors themselves. And uh, we see a power of the bonuses to, to set up the case for team proposition. In bonuses, you mean we have a problem because these are short-term bonuses and they're measured by the amount uh, of the, uh, the company earned minus the amount they lost, the cost of production. Therefore, the executives can always decrease the cost, for example, by laying off workers or decrease the factories in order to increase the amount of what that they get by bonuses. That's the fundamental problem that we have about bonuses and that's what we want to set up in the case for Team Korea today. And we have three arguments to propose of in team population today. First, you have to talk about the fundamental problem of less, trans less transparency. And secondly, I'll explain about the class division this leads to. And lastly, our Deputy Prime Minister will explain the sustainability issues of the corporations. Now, to move straight on to the first argument of less transparency. Ladies and gentlemen, most parts of compensation to executives is not disclosed much to the public. And the negotiating table is behind, firmly behind the closed doors and in a secret place. These are held by the board of directors, uh, board of directors, and these are not disclosed to the public. These are only uh, mentioned and discussed upon by these board of directors, whom, uh, and many of whom there's executives in those board of directors as well. And um, and if it is no, ladies and gentlemen, it is the same. It is uh, at the time after the payments are already done, after the bonuses are already uh, paid to these people. And the calculation schemes is that there's future uh, future deals based on retrospective short-term analysis, as I explained before. Uh, yes, ma'am. Where will the, the bonus money that you are not giving anymore be sent into? But what will you do, do with that money? Well, you know, firstly, the motion, as I've explained, is about condemns the word well, The proposition has a burden of proof is that in the status quo, these bonuses have more harm than good. But just to answer that question, if the bonuses are somehow bad, which is not the motion in the first place, then they can easily go to increasing the salaries of the entire employees themselves, because it's not only the CEO who, uh, who contributes to the, the companies. And also, we can make sure that it can be used for the, uh, corporations, uh, corporations' financial budget to improve its facilities or to uh, maintain its R&D facilities, etc. There's many ways we can spend this money instead of paying an enormous amount of money of bonuses uh, which is discussed behind these closed doors. And uh, moving on with the argument again, we'd like to give you an example, many examples of corporations that give excessive amounts of, of money to these, uh, buy bonuses to these uh, CEOs, executives, because these are held behind uh, these, um, these are held behind closed doors and people do not know about the exact money or bonuses that they get. For example, at AIG or Lehman Brothers, these CEOs had short-term profit by having a lot of subprime mortgage loans, which was detrimental for the company themselves, but they got to take the bonuses as a result of short-time uh, profit in Japan. And Chrysler, this big automobile company of the United States, 
After the bailout of the government, they gave 21 million US dollars as a bonuses to these executives without any apparent reason. And lastly, an example of Yahoo. Uh, no, thank you, sir. The CEO of Yahoo uh, got 60 million dollars of bonus over five years, and the reason why they got the compensation was not directly proven, and also the amount was disclosed only after the uh, discussion behind the closed doors by the board of ex board of directors. Because due to, uh, we can see clearly due to the nature of bonuses, how uh, these bonuses are retrospective. They give it uh, the 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 this this close of amount of bonuses are not there, or they're given after the event itself. The retrospective. We see that the process, as I explained before in my introduction, the process of payment of bonuses is definitely not transparent. And the CEOs can always abuse this, as I've explained in uh, the examples before, to get, gain their own personal profit by, by bonuses that are not included in their salaries and pursue their own benefits, and which we believe is a problem and a harm in the status quo because we don't see any reason why these CEOs who are not the only empl employers or employees in the corporation should be given this excessive amount of money when this can be used in many other ways, as I've explained before, improving the uh, research and development facilities, or, give, or raising the salary as a whole of the employees. And we, don't, we see that as a problem and a harm in the status quo. And therefore, that's a one reason, one harm, why it is condemned. It should be condemned in society. Now, to move on to the second argument of class division, I want to talk about how the payment of bonuses to executives uh, basically leaves behind the normal employees or the small shareholders out of this of this place because it divides the class of the, between these people and it almost hardens the structure of elitism in the society and it gives less social mobility because uh, the people who have the capital the people who are rich uh, who are after yes, yes ma'am uh, we believe this is not actually important because the executives earn money because they work because they took risks Yes, but these people earn money because they took risk. However, is it a fact? Is it a fact that if there's no employees, if there's no society, that these people will not be able to earn money, ladies and gentlemen? We respect that. We respect the, these CEOs' rights, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we respect their salaries being average three to eight times the, uh, the average of a normal worker. However, we believe that extraordinary amount of bonuses given to these corporate or uh, these uh, executives without any apparent reason in many cases is actually abuse of power and we think that's a harm to society. And going on with my argument, uh, when these people have the money, keep on getting these enormous amounts of bonuses and get invest more and more with those bonuses and they get more and more money. And these at least ch send their children to uh, like good schools like business schools to take MBA courses which cost a lot of money so that only at least can go there. This guarantees executive jobs for these people, so they get richer and richer. All those do not have a lot of, a lot of money, fight for jobs, they, they're wrapping up more debt, they scramble for basic welfare, ladies and gentlemen. We see that in this case, the payment of bonuses not only sustains, but exacerbates class division by giving more and more capital to these people who are already rich and making it sustain and exacerbates the situation of elitism and class division. Therefore, I'd like to break it to propose. Thank you very much. Um, 
whole life salary uh, is bonus, ladies and gentlemen. So actually, this gives them a lot of incentive to work harder to uh, improve the, improve the uh, company further, ladies and gentlemen. So we believe they actually deserve this. Uh, and then they told us they told us that uh, bonuses are are not given transparently. But we believe that they they are still working and. Uh, we believe actually company and executives help in a way, how? Because they create job opportunities, for example, in China. In China, there are workers everywhere, but people are dying, for example, because of promise. But we believe that if this company brings, uh, their, uh, it brings a new job opportunities, so we believe actually he does, he does uh, his mission to help the government, to help those okay. people, poor people. No, thank you. So we believe, uh, we believe that companies are helpful in a way, ladies and gentlemen. And you told us that uh, they are going to divide uh, classes, but we believe that the, it, it's not unfair, ladies and gentlemen, because, for example, when uh, a worker was a child, he didn't work. He hanged, uh, he, he hanged out with his friends, and he, uh, I mean, he spent his time free, but a, but an executive, ladies and gentlemen, he worked hardly, and he's been working for years. So actually, he deserved it. Okay, you accept what? Uh, accept the salaries are hard, but bonuses are uh, are a different situation. Why? Because bonuses given by only a, some kind of project. So we believe that this is not actually a problem, and we believe they have a right to take. Uh, right to take that money, ladies and gentlemen, and spend it how they want. Uh, and let's look. Um, and uh, today they told us we can use that money for uh, other things, uh, for example, uh, giving uh, to other poor people. But we believe that this is not going to benefit too much, ladies and gentlemen, because practical benefit is not going to be actually that much. Why? For example, in India, if you divide. Uh, if you divide bonuses to billions, ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to help them. It, it, it's going to be less than, for, for example, one dollar. So we believe that this is not actually going to give you any benefit, ladies and gentlemen. But today, uh, we believe that uh, bonuses can give enough incentive to the executives. But then no. they can improve the country in the future. I, yes. I think it's right that uh, the CEO of Chrysler, because he did not manage the company or the company failed, but after the bailout scheme, he got himself $21 million of bonuses for something he did wrong. Uh, we believe that this is not his fault, because still he, he worked and he took risks. So we believe it, 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 it can still be, uh, and we, we think that this is an exception, because there are many, many companies in the world, and these companies, and these companies, uh, executives work harder to improve the, improve the uh, company further. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you that uh, first, first, I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to talk about investment, and secondly, uh, I'm going to talk about practical harms. Uh, firstly, then, ladies and gentlemen, we already actually in the study scope help the help those poor people, help the country, ladies and gentlemen. How? For example, executives. Uh, executives, when they got bonuses, ladies and gentlemen, they start to invest those money, uh, these money, and they, they uh, because they don't want to get affected from the inflation uh, and lose their money in somewhere else. So, so we believe that they need a, um, they need a, a nice investment, and by this way, they help the private corporations. So they actually create job opportunities in the whole country. So we believe they have a great effect and great beneficial way to use that bonuses. So we believe that those bonuses don't go just to buy a Ferrari or just buy some, something nice luxury cars. They also use this for the good for the, the, good for the um, uh, society. About the practical harms, today I'm going to present you three, pra three main practical harms. Uh, about your system. You will lose executives if you stop uh, giving bonuses uh, to them. And secondly, I'm going to talk about efficiency of the company and thirdly, how it contradicts to its aim. Let's start. As you all know, executives, 50% of the
their salary is bonuses. So executives care about bonuses, and bonuses are really important incentives that pushes executives to work hard and to take risks. So he works hard because they work, to, for example, 20 hours a day because he, has always, he always has to check his phone. So we believe uh, workers are actually working only for eight hours then go to your home. So we believe actually uh, they deserve those money, ladies and gentlemen. And if executive salary will, uh, if executive's salary will decrease by taking those bonuses, then executive will stop work, will stop to uh, to get improved because uh, he's not going to find anything to do more because he will earn the same. Uh, so he's not going to work harder. So we believe that it also causes for it, uh, decreases the efficiency of the company, ladies and gentlemen, which is which brings to my second point. If executives quit or stop work passionately and uh, hard hard, uh, the company's improvement will stop because the executive will stop take risks and do those projects that you really help the uh, that really help the company. Because as we all know, executives are the main brain of those companies. Uh, or workers only do what, what we told them. So then they, they won't care about the company anymore because they will get only 50% of their main salaries. So this company cannot go further and improve, so it cannot get any profit by uh, any kind of job. By this way, it leads to third harm, contradicts its, to its aim. If company cannot get any profit, so it will start to release and fire lab laborers, maybe decrease the salaries of those workers, ladies and gentlemen, which uh, which destroys the jobs uh, in those companies. So we will actually you are contradicting to to uh, you are contradicting to your aim because that uh, your aim is to save people's lives. But then what happens? People are actually going to die in uh, crowded in crowded countries, for example, like in. India, because people are going to be hungry because they cannot earn money. So we believe that you are actually giving three main harms to the uh, uh, as whole. So don't no, at all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
well, average, averagely, 38 times more salary than the normal people. So we never heard a direct reason or a proof why you also need bonuses when there are when there when these executives already uh, receive a lot more money than other than other people. Now going up to direct rebuttals against team opposition before talking about our argument about sustainability. First thing we have to take a look at uh, look at the idea uh, about how these how these executives take a risk and therefore uh, they're receiving uh, bonuses and this is justified. Well, we say that what is, uh, what is exactly the meaning of taking a risk? And we say, and the question is this taking a risk so beneficial? We say that uh, we don't really know what taking the, the risk is, which was very vaguely explained by Team Opposition. And we say that other employees also take the risk. So why don't we all, so, what, so what's really the difference? And, and we also say that a lot, in a lot of times, this well, taking a risk they're talking about is really harming these companies because because bonuses are really calculated in a in a, in a formula that because that uh, that the, these people actually this, these executives learn a lot more bonuses when their profit increases and because profit is uh, is reducing and subtracting what you earn of what what you actually lost the production cost from what you earn many. Many executives, in order to increase their profit and to get more bonuses, actually harm the companies by uh, by laying off employees and by decreasing the factories and decreasing jobs, jobs because they want to actually because they want to lower the production cost, but which is really uh, harming the company and the people who are employed. And we also think that uh, and we also think that their rebuttal against our transparency uh, transparency argument was very big and was very not elaborate because they all because they only said that these executives are help, are helpful and they're creating jobs, which we believe uh, which we believe they have already rebutted because just because you're helpful doesn't mean that you should get so much money and you should get total like two hundred times more money than other employees. We saw no justification why this situation where these where these executives are receiving so much money through unclear and untransparent ways should be justified. And the, and the rebuttal against our argument of class division was also not valid because they, because they said, oh, well, this is actually fair that class division is happening because, because a lot of people who are, who are normal uh, employees, not, not these executives, are hanging, on, hanging around when they're young, not like these executives. We see that this is total assumption that just because you are not the executive means that you didn't work hard as the executive. We think that there are a lot of problems like structural problems or the or your uh, economic stance, the economic stance of your family. And we think that this argument of class division is actually uh, is actually exacerbating the situation because uh, exacerbating the situation because when these because these ex executives have so much money, then the sons and daughters of these executives will be able to afford a lot more money, a lot more money, and these people will be really the only ones who can go to MBAs and, and again, be the executives, which which will really be exacerbates of class division. And they also told us that because these uh, executives use bonuses to invest, this can be justified. But we think that it's really an assumption that these uh, these these executives will invest their bonuses. We think that luxury will be also involved. And we think that if we don't give bonuses, then we think this we can make a lot more product, productive use of this money because in the case of not giving bonuses, we think that these bonuses will be used to actually benefit the company directly for that company which will be its most important, not investing it to other companies. We think that the, the focus of the debate is here uh, should be the should be the companies of these of these uh, executives we're talking about. And they also talk about practical harm of how we will lose executives because these executives will lose the incentive to work harder and will take risks. We think we also think that this is an assumption uh, that people, just because we don't give out bonuses to people, they will still they will uh, they will leave their jobs and they will uh, give up their lives as executives. We think that we think that the average salary salary being already 30 times the normal salary of others and a lot of more advantages like stock options already like prove, so. wait a minute, already prove that these executives are far more better and which means that there is still an incentive for these executives to actually stay in their position. Even if they uh, don't quit, they are they're not they are going to lose their incentive to work harder. Yes, ma'am. We, oh, we know that, they're, we know that uh, you're, you're, you're all talking about how they could, uh, how they will work less harder. But we, but we say that through our argument of 
less transparency. We've already shown you how these bonuses are not really are not really uh, standardized and, and are not really calculated by like how many hours or this isn't a, an appropriate standard of how many how much you actually work harder. And we think that because the board of directors only uh, these are the people who actually decide the bonuses of the executives, we think that uh, we think that we cannot really guarantee that these bonuses will be given simply because they work harder. And we think that there are a lot of other factors that are more uh, that, that really come into play. And they also stated uh, and, uh, and another assumption we, we believe is that um, we, we think that this was also an assumption because we see a lot of CEOs and executives in the status quo who don't really uh, get a lot of bonuses and who don't really get a lot of salary but still work hard for the company like Steve Jobs and other CEOs who receive a single digit salary but wait a minute but, but who still uh, work hard for the company. Yes ma'am. Steve Jobs actually owned the company as you can recall. Yes ma'am, we do know that. He's that's why we're talking about it, because he is actually an executive, which is in the per perimeter of this debate. And we think that because team of team of the team of this team in the end didn't prove to us why executives should be receiving so much money, in, especially through untransparent uh, meetings, we, we think that uh, the salaries and the salaries and the incentives and the benefits they're receiving is already enough. And we should also care about other people who are not really getting. Uh, enough money. And going back to our argument of sustainability, we think that because executives in a lot of cases pursue their own pr profit instead of the company's interest or, or the company's profit when they don't match, we think that this is going to harm the sustainability of these companies. It's especially when especially when these companies are in crisis and especially when these executives feel that the company is going to fall down, these, uh, these board of directors or directors actually have a meeting and then choose to give out the rest of the company's money to these ex executives, which happened in the weird corporations where when this corporation actually filed a bankruptcy and they closed down factories of actually making a loss of more than 20,000 jobs, but then it was found out that $20 million were given out to, them, were given out to the executives in the form of bonuses, which really shows how much of these executives pursue their own interests rather than the interests of the company, and how giving out bonuses can actually harm these companies, not really benefit or incentivize these people to work harder. And because we think that bonuses ultimately uh, make these individuals pursue their own interests, and, and uh, we, we like to propose things. Downsize the people, downsize companies to get big. 
but that does not exist, like in Coca-Cola or all over the world, people are increasing their workforce. And now, I would, once again, I believe that they're overprotected. So, uh, aforementioned, they don't downsize, they actually get greater and greater with every, every profit they make. And will you ban snow from nature because it gives people cold? If any abuse is spotted, people get fired to the point. It's not something to be so worried about. You cannot stop it because people will do crimes, but you just fire them because it will cost them their jobs. They won't do it. And now coming to my argument on why the state can't and should not interfere with bonuses. The state can't force me to feed a random guy on the street who is hungry simply because I have some coffee. That's my coffee. Likewise, the state can't have a word on the bonuses. This is not a matter of who needs money, but is a matter of who deserves money. And if I know one thing in the world, it, it is that executives deserve the bonuses they get to the smallest bit. Let me prove you in exactly three points. First of all, the, these executors have great education and great experience. First of all, they have Ivy League quality education. And that's not all. After going to a top, top school of college, you have to work in a company for 10, 20, maybe 30 years to get to the point that you are in. And when you think about it, it's not that easy to be a CFO in Apple or a CEO in Nike. Plus, the replaceability of them is not really uh, explicable, explainable, uh, or as we as a team like to call it, work never changes, but risks taken change every single day. Let me put it in other words. When, you, when there's a simple worker doing a job, there are also thousands and thousands, sometimes millions of people who can do the same job in the same quality. But you cannot just tear away the jobs and put some random guy and expect to have the same quality, can you? As you see, they, they fired Steve Jobs at a time and they almost got bankrupt. And, and my third point on why these people really, really deserve their, uh, their uh, bonuses is the profit they bring. They bring such huge profits that they deserve sharing it, don't they? No thanks. Now, summing up all this, I'd like to give another example. Michael Jordan gets $1 million per match, but he also makes billions of fans happy and brings billions of dollars of profit to, the, to his team and therefore deserves it to the, it to the tiniest end. And it's the same case in the executives. They deserve it and it is there. Can permission? Yes, sir. Isn't that exactly why these CEOs and executives already receive a much more higher salary and other benefits like stock options? Aforementioned by my first speaker, th this, this bonus has a huge role on the incentivization of these people. And if you know that you're going to have $1,000 doing nothing and $5,000, no, $1,000, the same money by bringing immense profit, then you will pick to do nothing. It's just human nature. You cannot change it. Yes, sir. Well, did Michael Jordan receive any kind of bonuses that was not included in the salary? He does, he does actually earn the bonuses, $1 million bonus every match he wins. And now let me prove you why Robin, playing Robin Hood does not work, which they plan to do. The ones that die are not the ones that have jobs. They don't, the ones who are homeless and workless die every day. But workers have minimum wage plus health care. For example, in USA, the, the minimum wage average is $7.5 per hour, and Europe has a, Europe, especially Germany and France, and these, all these, all these uh, countries have great welfare, so workers are more than happy to work. And if not, once again, because they're so replaceable, there are thousands and thousands of people who are more than willing to get their job. And in addition to all that, it's the government's job to protect the poor, not a company's job. And it, but even though it's the, it's the government's job, executives do help these people immensely in two ways. They raise profit, so they increase taxes. Taxes paid to the government from the company. Plus, they raise the profit and thus increase the workforce in that company. So they also take, take a greater number of work, workers there and help them. 
And when you take the bonuses away, like you're aiming to do, you lessen the profit that the company gets, as mentioned by my uh, speaker before, and then, and then you make you lead to the decreasing of taxes and decreasing of workforce, and thus kill the needy. This just does not work out. And today I proved you in four, four main points why execs deserve these bonuses to the tiniest bit. One, to be the education and experience they have. Two, the fact that they're irreplaceable. Three, the profit they bring. Four, the fact that they're already helping. So don't let these people get killed. So don't let many people get killed in disguise of help and vote for opposition. Or, uh, or, or the lower parts of the society is mad. 
Well, uh, we say that playing Robin Hood at the, at the point will not solve everything, but we say that this actually will, look, uh, will be the starting point of solving everything, Madam Speaker. We say that the first step is actually provided by two propositions, as, on the other hand, opposition is providing us with nothing but a solution to actually exacerbate the situation that we see, uh, we see in the status quo, Madam Speaker. Well, actually, in this class, in the first class of fairness in society, we like to divide it into two points. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the gap between the rich and poor and how it's not easy to overcome. And secondly, I'm going to talk about that, how team opposition stance actually exacerbates the situation. But we say that unless a genius like Steve Jobs, who actually is one of the best CEOs that we've, ever, that we've actually uh, seen in, in the history of, of humankind, basically he has innovative ideas and he has leadership and etc. We say that quite obviously uh, Steve Jobs is actually quite genius. So we say that uh, if a genius like Steve Jobs cannot come out. We said it's actually extremely difficult for people to break through the wall between uh, the wall between the gap of rich and poor, Madam Speaker and Mr. Speaker, because we say that there are huge disadvantages for the first first place, and we say that these are this, uh, these are not optional. These were actually uh, when they were born, they were born, born from poor family, you know, that, that, and this is not their choice. They were born from uh, they were born from poor family in the first place, and this is not this was actually not their choice. And we say that educational disadvantages and the disadvantages that they have in social connections and the disadvantages that they, have in, uh, that they have financially. We say that these kind of huge disadvantages that they have from the beginning of their life, we say that this is actually quite difficult to overcome. Uh, for example, how can you, uh, uh, we, we say that on uh, team competition that it's quite difficult to imagine a person being more, uh, more, more smarter and being more educated than a person who can just simply go into Harvard or go into great universities uh, just by paying a lot of money, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker. So we say that this is a huge disadvantage for these people in the first place. Exactly. And the second point of this class will be about how team opposition stance only exacerbates the situation. We say that team, uh, team opposition, they're basically supporting a situation where people, uh, CEOs, on top of their huge salaries, are going to get another huge amount of bonuses, like 20, 60 million dollars. We're, we're not talking about just 10 or 100 dollars. We're talking about millions, tens of millions of dollars. And we say that because these elite, elite people of, of our society will simply become much more richer as, as bonuses are provided, we say that the same situation, the same cycle, will simply continue on in our society. And we say that the uh, issue of fairness will not be solved at all. It's not. Uh, so your suggestion here is uh, taking some money away from the rich to make everyone equal. Well, this is not exactly true. We're not, we're not, we're not actually taking away your money uh, without any justification because we say that there's a lot of justification that we've provided from team competition about the unfairness and about how people, these people actually are using their power to gain, the, gain more money and not think of the company but think of themselves. We see that there are plenty of reasons to get rid of points, Madam Speaker. So now we move on to our second class, which is about the effects to the CEOs. What we say, Madam Speaker and Mr. Speaker, is that uh, now, first of all, that, that incentives will not uh, will not actually com completely disappear even though bonuses are not there. For example, Madam Speaker and Mr. Speakers, uh, the reputation problem. We say that no CEO will simply not care about the corporation anymore simply because there are no bonuses because they will have to care about their reputation. And also, we believe that there are other incentives such as uh, about the negotiation, a payment negotiation that will, that they will have at the end of the week, at, at the end of the year for the payment uh, for the decision of the payment they're going to get for the next year. We say that these kind of incentives still exist in the status quo. We say that there are incentives other than bonuses. We say that uh, there are, there are arguments about how they only know incentives, so they will not take any risk that's not stand to its way. And also, we believe that uh, CEOs will still exist because CEOs still outweigh the payment of any other any other. Uh, people actually working in the same company. We believe that they will still be popular, that they will still earn 10, 20, 30 more times the amount of money just from, the, from their salaries and other compensations, Madam Speaker. Uh, now we move on to our third class, which is about the effects to society. Well, first of all, we want to talk about the, uh, how we can use this money in a more wise way. We say, they told us that only 10% of, uh, of, uh, of the money that they receive from the bonuses will actually be spent into uh, luxury spending of the, of the CEO. So we say on team competition, that if we actually take away the bonuses from these CEOs, that 100% of this money can actually be invested on making more jobs or making the quality of the products go higher than the speaker and the speakers. We say that this is a much better use of the money instead of providing, uh, providing these CEOs money to get another Ferrari. And, then, and the second point is that we believe that uh, uh, in-team competition, 
uh, in team composition space, we see that we're trying to portray a much more a fair image of society instead of trying to simply say and tell us irresponsibly, Madam Speaker and Mr. Speakers, that it is the people, uh, it is the people's fault that there cannot become CEOs, Madam Speaker. We say that uh, because we believe in fairness and because we say that all people should be able, we be able to strongly propose. Thank you very much. Hi ladies and gentlemen, today I will give my rebuttal speech for uh, my team of opposition and I will divide my speech into two parts as principal analysis of this argument and the practic practical benefits of our system. First, as a principal say, they said that there is no reason to give bonuses. But I want to ask that and I want to repeat what my friend said. As a, let's say, I am an executive. I have education in really high standard level college. Like I'm, let's say I'm a uh, graduate graduate of uh, Harvard University. I have more education. I give my efforts, and I came here for for uh, with my all my efforts, and it's my gift. Also, I want to give another point for you. They said that there is no reason to give bonuses. But let's compare. If you give bonus to workers and if you give bonus to executives, executives have more effect on also they have effect on workers because uh, if executives take these bonuses, they want to improve their bonus also because they want to get more bonuses, more bonuses and more bonuses. They are, therefore they will encourage they and they will encourage their workers to work a lot also, but if you give these bonuses to workers, they will they take these bonuses for on themselves because they don't have anybody below themselves. But if you give these bonuses to executives, they will affect the people who are below them. Also, you said no, you said that they have already high prices, but it's uh, your uh, work also. You said that uh, nearly 50 percent of uh, salaries are comes from bonus, and I want to ask that if you cut the half of their money, they it will go down. Therefore, fifty percent of the salaries are stable because it's uh, here for only the uh, like reputation of job. But the other percent is for effort. And if you cut this part and if you decrease their salaries, they will start to be more. And they won't work as hard as the bonuses that they take. They, that they take. Because, because let's, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's have uh, empathy with them. And let's say uh, you are really have the education, you have everything, but someone takes your money and gives other people, and you are, have half of your salary, and you, you don't work, continue to work, because as an executive, you know. Uh, you have more value than the other people, and you can find easily another job. Uh, that was my another point. That, for example, you can find lots of workers because they have unemployment. However, you can't find executives that much easy because uh, there are very few executives, and they are really precious for their. Uh, uh, Companies because they their contract has some conditions that you can't hire them easily. Therefore, uh, if a worker uh, decrease their form of work, decrease their uh, yield, you can't hire them easily because you can't find uh, another worker easily. But you can't hire uh, an executive easily. Therefore, you you have to. Provide a happy, happy and uh, happy environment, and also high prices for them. Also, you always talk about the transparency, and even if the uh, bonus uh, bonus system is not transparent, and uh, you said that you can invest this money, take this money, and invest this money to other sides. And I want to ask that if uh, this bonus system is not transparent, will the investment system?
stress them because uh, again executive will manage this money and it will again not will transfer the system. But uh, it was your idea, but I think this system is real transfer because we are talking about real professional companies. You are talking about Apple, you are talking about Coca-Cola. And how can you say that an, an executive uh, decreased the cost and uh, decreased, tried to decrease the cost to have more money? But their first aim to improve their, improve their uh, company because if you look this as a short term and long term project, if you decrease the cost and try to manipulate your company, you can have short term happiness. But in long term, when you, your uh, company go bankrupt or go failing, you won't have that uh, advantage also. Also, get between rich and poor. Let's say I'm a poor student, but I can get scholarship. I can even find something. I'm a son of a teacher, and uh, my money is not even enough to go to uh, United States for uh, buying an uh, airplane ticket. But I can get a scholarship from even Harvard University, maybe Princeton University, and I can have an education without no money. Don't you have the? Don't you know anything about the uh, scholarship system? Because in this world, even if you are so poor, you, if you have the uh, smartness, if you have the talent, you can you can have the best education and you can be even a CEO. Let's come to the practical side. Uh, okay. We're not going to be talking about exceptional people who will But we are talking about yes, all CEOs are exceptional because there are thousands of working in a uh, company, but there are five or six executives because they are exceptional because being CEO means exceptional and you are saying that you are giving an exceptional example because the CEOs are exceptional because they are important people uh, also uh, I want to give, uh, uh, talk about the division of bonuses and I want to give an example let's say I have a uh, bottle of water and there are 30 people in here and if I drink that water I can uh, be I can uh, have the uh, water I, I can drink it and I can help other people to find a solution if everybody are thirsty but if you share this water nobody uh, stop their thirstiness thirstiness and everybody continue to be thirsty and they won't have anybody to help them therefore the bonus can be an ocean, but if you divide them into drop, a drop is nothing in, uh, compared to ocean. Also, uh, you said you give us no solution, and you said only that uh, we are, uh, the bonus system is not transparent. Uh, you are uh, just said that you give uh, actually a uh, two point when we ask not in your model, you said that we can improve the com uh, company that with that money we can do investment. But I want to ask you, improving company is a really riskful thing because most of the country, uh, most of the companies want to stay on their money because when you start to improve your company, you have more risk. Therefore, improving company is riskful and each, uh, do, uh, each company do not want to do that. Also, uh, that drops in ocean despair in the market because they are not efficient. Uh, but if you give this bonus to uh, executive, they will put in the market and without a big huge money, it will uh, really be really beneficial. Thank you for your listening.
one was our fairness of the situation, who were in rich gambling. And the second of all is, is that a practical benefit or hard? Let's look at the first clash. They told us that people are not equal because they couldn't get the same conditions uh, to the uh, executive in the future. Even if it's true, ladies and gentlemen, how their system, they didn't explain us, how their system is going to solve this problem, ladies and gentlemen. They only told us that they're going to use uh, bonuses uh, for the benefit of the company. But this doesn't still uh, changes anything in, anything that you find as a problem, ladies and gentlemen. You think that they're poor and rich young, but still executives will uh, will get more and more every day because company will improve, as you said. We, so we believe that uh, uh, they, they, so we believe that they didn't actually tell us how they're going to help those people. But we told you that executives are the main brain of the ideas of the company, ladies and gentlemen, and, deserve, and they deserve it. Yes, you said about the salaries, but salary, but they need to get the salary. Uh, yes, they deserve the salary, but also, as we explained you before, they take risks. Uh, maybe they can be fired if they uh, couldn't like uh, create those projects. So we believe that they take risks. So we need to give uh, them back to them. Even if they use for luxury, ladies and gentlemen, still, this is their money. They can decide whatever uh, to do with their money, ladies and gentlemen, because they earn it. And second flashpoint was practical benefit or harm. They told us they're going to help those poor people, but we say, Madam Speaker, they already uh, we, uh, they already help poor people. Why do, do they have to do more to make uh, people happier, ladies and gentlemen? Because they already make, as we explain in our arguments, also a job opportunities in private corporations. So we believe that they already help those poor people. We're actually helping those uh, hungry and jobless people to find a job and maybe uh, become educated in the future because we are actually uh, decreasing the uh, poor and the rich gap, ladies and gentlemen. And we also, they, they talk about transparency. We believe that actually transparency also doesn't change the situation because, for example, you said uh, they might decrease the salary of the worker, workers. But we believe that that's wrong, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, the, the workers also uh, get small bonuses when the company improves in, improves in the future. How is that going to work? How? Because the company will get bigger and bigger if, if the company will improve in the future. Then they can give more salaries also to the workers, ladies and gentlemen. So we believe that they're, all, they're already helping those poor people. And maybe they can take also take other people to the uh, company. So we believe that transparency actually is not a, the main problem in here. But we told you in, uh, in our first speaker, we proved it practically how this how this status quo is actually beneficial already. And second of all, how your system is not going to benefit at all and actually will harm in the future. And uh, thirdly, uh, we explain uh, we explain in principally. Uh, our second speaker talked to you about princip uh, principally why this is wrong because this is executive's money and we should give give it back to the executive. So go it all. Thank you.
two opposition and many assumptions throughout today's way. First, we agree that they told us that the ones who worked hard before, like when they were students, are the ones who become the achievers. Which we believe in team competition is an assumption from their side, and actually an uh, elitist thought from their side itself. Because the, this thought is one that specifically is, does not recognize the status quo. There's a great difference of, of basis of capital between the elites and those, those who don't, don't have that much basis. And the elites and the poor, if they have equal, or even if the poor has a bit more amount of effort, it's obvious that the elite win because of the basis of capital, because they have a better environment. Only the geniuses, or the people who work very, very hard, even more than the elites, those, those are the only very minority people who will overcome this gap. Therefore, we have to say, uh, there was an assumption from team officers to say that the ones who necessarily work harder, the ones who spend more time uh, upon their efforts, are the ones who become serious uh, because we think that's another point of the need to stop and an assumption from team officers. Now, another assumption, the second assumption was that the CEOs will help out the society and benefit the society, and that's the reason why they, uh, they deserve these bonuses they make. Ladies and gentlemen, salary is money given to people, to employees, because they do their jobs they invent. And that's the meaning of salaries. So everyone's job inside a company is different. That's a key point. A workers, I mean, no one employee's job maybe to produce in factories, basically it's a normal job. That's the reason why you get salaries. An executive on the other hand, like CEOs, his job is different. His job is to make the company become better and more, more competitive in the society they invent. That's his key job. So when he does that job and makes more job opportunities and, and uh, whatsoever, that is something that's according to his job. That's the reason why he gets 38 times the salary that is included in his salaries. And that's the reason why that's not including the bonuses. So they didn't have any justification why they should uh, be given the bonuses. Rather, all they gave was, they gave us was the justification of the salaries and how it was 38 times the average worker. We accept that. We accept that these people work hard enough to get 38 times the salary of average workers. What we do not accept is that with their bonuses, they get 300 to 500 times the amount of pay of workers, which we believe is out of uh, the terms and out of the reason why they, sh they should get money. Where they're they doing their jobs, when they're doing their jobs, um, they should get the salaries, that's right, but the bonuses, we don't see any justification upon that fact. Team opposition did not provide any justification upon that fact. Either. And thirdly, there are some sort of that the CEOs are going to leave, which we say is definitely not true because. Uh, because they have already they have 38 times the salary they implement, and they have long, uh, other uh, other compensations like long term stock options they implement. If you have 38 times the salary, what does that mean? Well, if there's one car that a normal worker can buy, you can buy 38 cars they implement. That's how much salary an executive is getting on average they implement. That means that there's enough margin moderation for them to work in the the second point was about argumentation and judgment. The published society, we gave, us, we gave you three main points. Firstly, about the bonuses, how they're abused. Secondly, how there's social division. Thirdly, our corporations are irresponsibly failing to CEOs who need to preserve their own short term benefits. While team opposition said, only thing they said of argumentation was that they deserve the money, which we already say is not, because they already gained the money through the salaries, not the bonuses. We don't really see any justification of the bonuses. And also, on the argumentations, we didn't see any examples from team opposition. While we team opposition gave many examples of Chrysler A and A engine, etc. Last of the rewards, we have to say briefly that in the rewards points, ladies and gentlemen, it's not only that when we had two points of pandemic, we told you in the definition that the status quo is harmful, that's the definition of pandemic, but team opposition didn't take that into consideration, assumed that it was banning our bonuses, which is not in terms of the definition. However, team population debated with both uh, both means of pandemic management, but team population failed to do so because they only talked about their own points and didn't talk about the status quo, how about how it's harmful the status quo. Therefore, I'd like to beg to propose. Thank you very much.